Hey, welcome back. So I'm not in the shop again today. I'm out here in Beaumont on the job site we were on, working on that 657. Alex is just finishing up a few things on that, and I've got to finish the video on that. Uh, but then in the meantime, I'm going to check out the 651B. This thing honestly is a 651. It, it never was a twin, uh, but it has been repowered. This one's got a uh, Cat C15, and it's real low on power. So that when you put it in gear, um, you know, go to do any work with it, it just has no power to get out of its own way. They tried a few things. Uh, obviously, they didn't try fuel filters. And that filter looks really old. Um, but they did change the, tra the fuel transfer pump. So I'm going to start it up right now. And I'm going to let it warm up. And I'm going to plug ET into it and see what the fuel pressure is. And see if I can see anything odd. Any codes, anything. Any sensors not working, anything like that. Check out and see what the boost pressure is. Stuff like that. And then um, I have a sneaking suspicion it might be the timing on the cam. So I'm going to go through this stuff first and um, see what we can find. So let's get this thing started. All right. It's kind of weird. The steps used to be over here on these, but when they repowered it, they moved the air cleaner right there. And it's bigger, I guess, than the old ones. So they moved the step. So now i got to climb up here on this crazy cable. All right. Yeah. So check the oil and water real quick. black oil the smell is I don't smell any diesel in it that's good it's one thing on these you want to do every once in a while you know when you're pulling the sticks I kind of just almost always do it but it's to check for diesel in the engine oil especially if you have a power problem because if you get a bad injector that's dribbling fuel or something like that you can dribble it into the liner or you know into the cylinder and leak past the piston liner and get in the oil uh, there's other ways too you know when the oil can get through there or the fuel can get through there and if you get fuel dilution in your engine oil you're going to wipe out your crank so check out the coolant check out coolant cute little cap it's 51 it used to have a cap over here about the size of my hand it's supposed to have a lid like this now well, that's a radiator cap another one looks like it came off of a little hyundai or something like that Got a new radiator with the repower. Oh, here's a view of the other side. <clears throat> there's the ECM right over there. We got an air compressor, starter. Uh, here's the boot. The lights go to the aftercooler. And yes, kids, it's not an intercooler, it's an aftercooler. It's cooled by air after it comes out of the turbo. It's not cooled by coolant on its way to the engine. So, um, if, if it is the cam gear, I'm going to have to pull this fan structure off and pull the, well not pull the gear, but pull the peanut cover off and then check the timing on the cam. And check, we'll check the backlash on the idler, the drive gear for it. So it's amazing how much room is in here. When this machine came out originally in the early 70s, probably mid 70s, um, it had a, 30, a D346 in it, which was a V8, uh, real crap engine, real crap engine. If they lasted 5,000 hours, you brought it home and you threw it a party because it did a really good job for you. Um, you'd get 4,500 hours, up to 5,000 if you're lucky. 3,500 if somebody was playing with the fuel rack and turning the power up on it or something like that. Drop exhaust valves. Um, they just, even if they didn't do that, just they just wear out at 5,000 hours. This engine's going to last 10 to 15,000 in this machine right here in this application. But anyways, that old engine went all the way to here. You couldn't even get your arm hardly down the side here. To change a starter, you'd have to drop the pans and come in from the bottom. And you could come in here with your lunch bucket and just sit here and take... Take your time working on crap in here so nice and it's actually got more power <laughs> with the smaller motor so all right let's swing over here get into the cab get my keys keys already on oh need a key so used to these back in the day just had a knob and you had to hit the hit the pedal because to shut off the old ones, you pulled the pedal up to shut it off. And I still do that just by reflex. It's so funny. got a bad exhaust leak. So I'll check the fuel pressure and I'll check the uh, boost first off because it 
It could be a boost issue. If they've got a bad enough exhaust leak, we're not getting the, the speed we need out of the turbo to uh, you know, build the boost pressure that we need. So I'm gonna go get my laptop, I'll plug it in, and we'll kind of do some diagnostics on this. All right, so I've got my laptop out here. I've got it hooked up, just waiting for it to connect. Uh, I walked around it, because it sounded like it's got an exhaust leak when I rev it up here. It's got a, three really bad exhaust leaks on the manifold. Uh, so that's probably what it is. So I'm gonna get ET started up here with uh, you know with the diagnostic stuff so I can monitor the boost pressure, fuel pressure, all that stuff. And then I can take it for a quick spin. Uh, one reason I want to get out of this, it's like hey, it's a rattlesnake habit down. I don't know how I didn't get bit by a snake uh, climbing into this thing, but whatever. So I'm gonna pull it out of here so I can get it on some clean dirt and I don't have to worry about that. So let me get this thing locked on here and then I'll get the camera back on. Alright, so you can see on here it's only got it's got 4,616 hours on it. So you can see here it doesn't have any event codes locked, which is good. That would be like an overspeed or an overheat, something like that. And then we'll go to diagnostic codes. What diagnostic codes would be would be uh, like a sensor not working correctly or something not communicating. It's clean, there's nothing in here. It's got 4,600 hours on it. So now what we do, we'll go into here and uh, go into statuses. Look and see if there's any of these pre-filled groups that have uh, have what I want in there and I don't see them. Like they're here, right here. Engine speed, oil pressure, boost pressure, fuel pressure. That's what I want. So you can see the RPM 700, oil pressure's at 67, zero boost. Fuel pressure's at 76. So fuel pressure should be up 95 to 100, 105. I'm gonna rev it up right now. You probably won't be able to hear me when I do it. So I'm gonna rev this up to 1800, 2000 RPM and we'll see what our fuel pressure and, and boost pressure look like. So that's not real bad. I'd like to see that higher. So I'm gonna check into that. Maybe it's just the filters. Uh, and the boost pressure came up a little bit. This one's supposed to have a retarder. If it did, I'd be able to pull on the retarder uh, while I rev it up and it would hold it back so it would have to build boost. So I'll just have to get out here on the on the dirt here, run around, and we'll see if we can get that what that boost pressure will come up to when I've got a good load on the engine. So let me set this computer right here. Get it on the dash. And let's get this thing in the Trying to get it to build air and it's building very slowly so i can i'm gonna go get some earplugs because that thing is really loud with those exhaust leaks but I, if I, I gotta get air built it sounds like it's got an air leak somewhere i'm hoping i can get enough air built up just so i can get it released so i can test it um, see what's going on so but, uh, <laughs> it's funny it's got the wrong kind of control so it kind of breaks the gas they work so crawl through the snake habitat the back of the cab I lost all my air
one foot of gear. Now that I shut it off, I can hear an air leak down here. Um, I'm just going to talk about the exhaust leak. I, there's no reason, even if the exhaust leak isn't the problem, there's no reason to keep the exhaust leak because <laughs> it's going to rob a lot of power. It's going to get a bunch of heat down here by the engine and it's going to make a mess. And the longer that you let the exhaust leak, it's going to etch away at the cast iron exhaust manifold. So I'm going to talk to him about that. Um, he's probably going to want me to come back out and pull the manifold off and the turbo and we'll reseal that, make sure there's no broken studs, which is common on these. And then I will uh, we'll get that get that part fixed, and then we'll we'll see if we still have a boost pro or soon see if we still have a power problem. So, anyways, this is a short video. It's um, a little different than I've been doing over the years. Um, just doing a little diagnostics. I really don't like doing diagnostics um, in videos, just because it's a lot of work to kind of hold the camera, try to figure things out, work my way through. Not like stupid too, because you know you come up with ideas and ideas. Hey, maybe this is what the problem is, and it's not because there's six things that could cause this thing to run wrong. And um, I don't know, whatever. I mean, it, let me know how you guys like this video. Let me know if it's um, interesting to you guys to watch me diagnose something like this, or if you'd rather just see the kind of stuff I've been doing. Um, put it in the comments, I really appreciate that. And um, I'm sure you guys will be seeing the 651B again. Um, this machine, going by the type of brakes it has and stuff like that, it's gotta be the newest it could be is around 1977, 78, something like that. So this machine's, um, God, what is that? 50 years old this machine's 50 years old um, caterpillar makes some good stuff you won't find too many other brands out there a guy out here the contractor he's got these terexes those are just as old or older um, but you don't see a lot of that um, for this machine to still be running after 50 years is, is a testament um, makes some quality stuff that's why all i work on and buy is cat so anyways thank you guys for watching please hit the like button um, if you liked the video at all hit it if you hated the video that's a good idea too and comment good or bad um, please just comment. It helps me with YouTube because I put a lot of work into building these videos and stuff. And it's just nice to have the feedback and then YouTube sees it and then they'll share my videos more. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.